in this setting up shop uh, video series we're putting together, uh, at this point we're, we've come to bench chisels. So we're going to be looking at regular bench chisels, not so much carving gouges and that kind of thing, but the regular, you know, the chisels you're going to use for a lot of your uh, pairing, uh, you know, a, a tenon or being able to deal with a, a rabbit or a dado cleanup, all the, the regular sort of bench chisel work you're going to do. Um, and for that, I have an assortment laid out here, but really I, I actually have one favorite chisel that's a three quarter inch chisel. It's a little bit proud of that. The antique chisels are never like a dead on exact. Um, they're sort of close to three quarters or maybe it's seven eighths. Sometimes they kind of vary. So um, my sizing is not exact to the you know, you know industrial tolerances. Um, but that's basically, I find that a three quarter to seven eighth inch chisel, I use that. I love that one. It works so great. The handle just suits my hand perfectly. And I use that all the time. In fact, I use it so much that I don't have it in hand right now because it's down at my house. I'm working on a project and that's the one I, that's my go-to chisel. So I think that's a good idea to find that one, especially um, in furniture scale work, three quarters, seven eighths. That's like, you know, you're kind of the Swiss army knife. It's going to do most everything you need. That said, you are going to find situations that you need a different size chisel. So uh, I'm going to show you what I have here. Um, when you, when you buy a four pack, a set of four, and you have the quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, there's so much overlap in there that it's, it's not necessarily useful. Uh, to have a half inch and a three quarter isn't enough of a difference. And also a half inch is a little bit bigger if you're cutting dovetails. A half inch can be a little bit big for some dovetails. So you want something smaller, but a quarter inch is really not the size you want. So uh, what I have found, what I've gravi gravitated toward, I have a collection of antique chisels and I have found myself able to uh, use these different sizes and I've gravitated toward a few different ones. So I'll show you that. Um, and the first I have here is just, this is a one inch chisel. Um, now this is standing in for me right now because my seven eighths inch, three quarter inch ish chisel is actually being used. But this is standing in for that right now. Um, this uh, is a really stout chisel, so I use this for a lot of stock removal. But um, my regular uh, go-to chisel I use for all sorts of pairing. Uh, but this handle uh, illustrates well. This is an octagon, and it's, it's really helpful when you're trying to do uh, delicate work to be able to ha uh, have those facets. Some people don't, aren't into that, they don't buy into that, and they like these round, turned handles, and that can work. But the problem is like right now I'm holding it and I, I don't have any clue where the, the um, edge is because I can't see it. I have to look. And especially in this little eighth inch, I have to really get it in there. But if you get it, you'll find that you'll get like a feel. And I know I can sense the flats a little bit wider in the top and I, I know what this handle is like. So you're, you're doubling your sensory perception, your eyes and your hand, you're feeling what's going on. And that really does, uh, is actually a practical help I found. So um, having these octagonal handles are really helpful, um, or at least some kind of faceting. So uh, having a 7 8 inch chisel is really good. Down from that, and your kind of essential four, what I would say your essential four, is um, a 5 8 inch chisel. So you see I'm shifting it a little bit. So I have a 5 8 and the reason I have this size and a 3 8 is because, again, a half inch is not quite wide enough for a lot of stuff, but it's a little bit too wide for some dovetails. So instead of doing a half inch and three quarters, it makes sense to me to have a five eighths and a three eighths. So um, it's not a hard and fast rule. I'm just telling you what I have found, what I gravitated toward. Then lastly, of the four essentials is this little eighth inch uh, chisel. Uh, you may think you don't need an eighth inch, but that's not true because you will find so many situations that you want to get inside of there and be able to get at that. Um, and so this is a uh, this is probably not exact. This might be a little bit proud, but the quarter inch chisels it's just sometimes too big for what you want to do, what you want to get in at, you know, between dovetails or something. Especially if it's some of those quarter inch chisels are quite tall, they're quite thick, the modern ones, and to get between two really tight dovetails. To get between the tails can be really hard. So um, those are that's sort of like the basic standard uh, kit that you want to be looking at. Those are helpful. The eighth inch really doesn't come in handy all that often, but when it when the need is there, 
you, you have to have that one. Um, and you can see also it's so thin and delicate. This is not for pounding. This is for paring or very delicate chopping, very delicate. But here is, here's the workhorse uh, for a lot of different tasks. This is the two inch chisel. Um, the two inch chisel, I just, I think you have to have one. It's so, so essential. I have my seven eighths in this and I pretty much use these for the bulk of all the work I do besides the little between dovetails. So get yourself a two inch chisel uh, that has a shorter handle like this, not like a timber framing chisel, but like a, a shorter one like this. And you'll use this for all sorts of pairing. Um, I like how wide it is, even for pairing pins, uh, when you're pairing pins for uh, doing a mortise and tendon joint. I like having it this wide because it's sort of like, if you think about a draw knife, when you're pulling a draw knife toward you, even for shaping a little spindle, well, obviously you're only cutting a little bit at a time. So why would you need a draw knife that's, you know, 10 inches wide or 12 inches wide or something but you find you can skew it you can pull it this way you can use different sides of it it makes it that much easier if you had a draw knife that was only three inches wide you'd have to be really careful to stay on there and it would just make it that much more clumsy so i found that uh, it's the same sort of principle with this if you're pairing pins and you have a, a three quarter inch chisel you have to stay right on and you have to check and make sure with this, you can sort of psh, 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 just push like a draw knife would just pull real fast. So a two inch chisel is so great. And obviously for pairing tenons or something like that, two inches is going to be really handy because you're pairing the entire surface, the, the entire cheek of the tenon uh, at one time. Um, so these are all firmer chisels. These are all, it means they have the square edges on them. They're not bevel edge chisels. Uh, some of these bevel edge chisels, a lot of chisels today are uh, have a, a softened edge. They're beveled here. And one of the reasons for that is so that they can get inside of a, um, between tails or a small area without marring. But I've actually found that these uh, firmers that have a square edge and no, no bevel on there, uh, they don't really hinder. I'm able to get inside and use the corner of the chisel to clean out and it doesn't ever mar that. So it maybe requires a little bit more attention, but I've not found that to be a big issue. Um, so this chisel here is just a, sort of a big illustration of what the bevel can be. This is a Japanese chisel and you can tell that because the, of the, the huge bevels here, like the, it's like a big triangle. And then on the bottom, it's actually hollowed up to the edge, which is actually, um, when it gets when it gets ground down you would actually hammer that back out from the top to provide a flat there so this is a japanese chisel and people really like these because they can get inside between tails and without marring because it's so relieved um, but again i just have not found that to be an essential thing so something to consider you'll hear people say oh you really want japanese chisels because of that reason um, and that's just not been my experience it's not that essential but they are really great chisels for sure um, and then lastly, I have this little guy. This is just a, a gouge, a regular bench gouge. Um, it's not made for massive, massive chopping. Um, but say, for example, I just made this, this plane a while back, um, not too long ago. And to chop out this big mortise, that's a lot of material in birch to be chopping out. And so I started that work. It's sort of like if you think about it, a four plane or a jack plane, um, you have that that, that, that curved iron that's going to be able to dig really deep and take big heavy shavings. This is sort of like the foreplane of the chisels. If you need to hollow a big area, um, this is a good way to start. You can bore a hole to get started, but using this and driving it with a mallet, you can really get down quick to hog out a lot of material. And so I, when I was making that plane, for example, I started with this to chop out most of the the bulk of the waste and then I shifted over to this really stout one inch and I was able to finish clearing out and just squaring it off. So those are uh, some chisels that you would want to consider uh, using. I have found that uh, I really gravitate toward the kind of the one besides pairing pins with my two inch the one chisel that I use for 90% of my work is this three quarter to seven eighths inch chisel um, that is just so handy. It's got a faceted handle and it's really, um, it helps me to be able to know that tool, know that tool's tuned up. And that way I don't have 
15 different chisels that I'm trying to keep tuned up all the time. I have this one and I use it effectively when it's a little, when it goes a little, little bit out of sharp, I'm able just to tune it up real quick again and get it back into service. And that way I'm not maintaining tons of different chisels. So um, that's, that's how I approach it. I try to keep it relatively simple and just use a few. Um, but if you have any comments or any questions about that, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. I know YouTube is great at sharing comments and a, a lot of people have different experiences. So um, this is just how, how I found in my work what really makes sense for furniture making. So I hope that was helpful.